because it was a huge opportunity and because I'm an ambitious sort of a sod, I can't stand to see a, a great opportunity just lost. I think it's fair to say I was doing very comfortably in, in my little my solo career. We were on an upward curve. As I said in some interview before, you know, it, it's fine being the superstar in a third division team. Not that they were third division musicians, but just because of the nature of, of where you were at. To get a transfer into the Premier League is something that you're not going to turn down. Yes, yeah, so I get up every morning and I put all my pursuits on the back burner as I have a shower. And then I immediately resume doing all ten of them at the same time. But no, I do not in fact, you know, uh, fly an aeroplane, write a song, uh, fence the passengers in the back, uh, whilst at the same time whistling Dixie and cooking an omelette. I do have a lot of interest, but I don't do them all simultaneously. Neither do I have a big filofax, and I'm not a victim of time management. In fact, as most people know, I'm nearly always late. <laughs> so, so I'm pretty relaxed about things, actually. I suppose we wanted to go out, first of all, and just nail everybody with a great live show. Not too many live shows. There's no necessity to go out and uh, do overkill on it, which I guess we, we could have done, but this was not about doing a reunion tour or some nostalgia trip. Uh, it was about proving to people, you know, just how good the band was, just in case they'd forgotten, you know, and a lot of people did seem to have forgotten, judging by the ecstatic reviews and the, the crazy reactions to the tour. What it did, basically, was wind everybody up, and that was the intention, was to wind everybody up to the point where they were really going to be interested in what the album was going to be like. Can they pull it off? in the studio, in other words, add a little bit of drama. Basically, I mean, we, we're all still the same people we were uh, before, albeit a little bit, little bit older and a little bit wiser, so I think probably uh, some of our diplomatic skills have been honed up a bit, so we, we do tend to uh, say what we mean before we misinterpret what each other said and therefore head off like disagreements before they molehills turn into mountains you know certainly with the, the 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 record what's been really encouraging is the fact that if there's been any disagreements it's been on things that are so minuscule it's therefore apparent how much in sync we are about what we really do want to do on the record which is great the enthusiasm factor i think is uh something that's not unique, everybody's always enthusiastic, but there's there's enthusiasm above and beyond the norm. You know, there's an excitement like it's the first time. To be crude, you know, I mean, everybody loves having a shag, but the first time you do it, it's always a little bit more exciting than, uh, than a few of the other times, you know, uh, even though the experience is lovely. Well, this is like the first time again, you know. I don't have a problem with um, singing Maiden songs that were performed by other people. I mean, I did it the first thing when I came into the band, obviously with Running Free and songs like that. I love a lot of those songs, stuff like The Klansman. I mean, I think there's been some discussion about possibly doing a few more of those songs uh, on the new tour, which I would think is a terrific idea. I think the one that always comes up, certainly on the web, you know, is like, you know, oh, are you going to do Sign of the Cross with Bruce, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, yeah, I don't see any reason why not, as long as it fits in the set, we shall see. Well, the new lineup has gone down terrific, I mean, especially with me. <laughs> so, a little bit, I suppose. I, I'm not really sure what, how the dynamics of the band actually change. I think we're a lot more practical about things now, and we do know a bit more about what we're doing in terms of sound, in terms of planning things. And we all know the, the, the pitfalls, which makes life an awful lot more comfortable and cuts out a lot of the crap, which is caused by people misunderstanding things or misunderstanding each other or misunderstanding motivations, you know. The planning of the sound system, the planning of the monitor positioning and things like that, and the levels on stage, all of which are potential sources of aggravation after six months on the road. You can plan now. We can work ways around all those potential sort of conflicts that might occur. So everybody basically gets what they want. That's the aim of the whole deal. It's for everybody to get what they want and go out and have a great time every night. Earl's Court is obviously going to be a highlight, but we're only there for one day. <laughs> um, whether or not it's me revisiting my past, I love touring England. I never get to do it, hardly. I like going to chip shops before gigs and things like that, just really, really boring, mundane stuff, and I just, it's great. It's how I started.
You know, I mean, I started touring England. I never set foot abroad until I was with Iron Maiden. All I'd known was gigs in England. So whether we're doing the NEC or whether we're doing, you know, Mother O'Riordan's local pub with Samson, it's actually the same kind of vibe, you know, it's still British Rail sandwiches. <laughs> We've got Corn and Slayer supporting us on the European tour. And frankly, depending upon which country we're in and depending upon where they're at, in terms of the whole metal scene, we tried to tailor the bill as appropriate. So we've got the whole gamut of bands coming out and supporting us, which is great, because I would hate to leave anybody out that said that, you know, in an interview that, hey, yeah, we can kick Iron Maiden's ass. I would just, I want all of them to try. We want to start by regaining, I think, the status that we held in the middle of the 80s as being like, you know, real standard bearers, torch bearers for a whole generation of music, which came out of Great Britain and which seems to have been sort of uh, kind of buried for a while. The next thing we want to do is take that, just ram it down a few countries' fucking throats. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> in the nicest possible way. Because um, there's a lot of great music out there and there's an awful lot of real crap. I don't know, I just see Iron Maiden as being an antidote to the crap. Yeah, it was great doing it, don't I think? I think that we took the energy into the studio and that was the idea of going and doing the shows, obviously to promote the, the PC game and everything else, which is great. But mainly it was really for us to get the chance to get together, play some of the old stuff and take the energy into the studio from the tour. Because normally after a tour, I, mean, I know it was only a short tour, but normally after a long tour we'll take a few months off, hopefully. And that's what we, in an ideal world, you would do. But this time around, we, we thought, well, it's going to be a short tour. It'd be great to go in and do it and then go straight in the studio and take that energy in there. And I think it shows on the album. I think it's, you know, it sounds really sort of quite live, really. It sounds, I mean, it's got a good production, but it still sounds live, which is sort of best of both worlds. Well, the old stuff is not a problem because a lot of stuff we did in the early days was um, with three or four guitars anyway, which means we can play all the parts now live. And the new stuff, you know, we work stuff out so that it was it wasn't just people doubling up doing the same thing, you know, they were doing little embellishments here and there of other stuff. So they have one person playing like a staccato thing or something and another per person playing a, like a lead uh, melody type figure and then playing like more hard rhythm or something like that, you know. You could argue in a lot of ways that the approach wasn't that different and solo wise they just did whatever solos I felt right for them to do. I just asked them to do a particular solo and I thought particular style would suit that part. You know, I think it just works really well. It's not like they end up having a punch up over who's doing what. It's not like that at all. We've got a world tour coming up. Obviously we've got rehearsals before that, directly before that. Then we'll just take some time off, which would be, you know, nice, I've got to say, because after the end of this tour, it'll be like the end of a three year cycle, basically, we've had all any time off, so I think everyone's gonna be looking forward to that, really. But having said that, we're still looking forward to doing the shows, of course. I think have time off, take a bit, you know, restock, recharge the batteries, and, and we'll just take it from there and see what happens. Yeah, they did some amazing. Uh, to be fair, everywhere right across the board was really uh, it was exciting, and uh, the crowds were amazing. In America, especially, the, the concerts were really exciting. A lot of people have probably hadn't been at the gigs in maybe eight or nine years, you know, and they came back to have a look. You know, what they saw reminded them of what they saw before, and I think they really got off on it, singing, even Bruce, and Bruce is singing great, and having Adrian back was brilliant. It meant we could kind of add different textures to the songs and kind of have this guitar weaving through, and basically do the songs closer to how they were on the album and just add little bits and pieces here and there. That, to me, was, it was a bit of a prerequisite of the whole thing, because we went out and we played and we got we really got gelled in together and we got that kind of firing on all six cylinders feel about the band and it was great to come off that and come off tour and actually go straight in the studio I mean you we you got to imagine it is normally we go out we make an album which takes maybe if anything between four and six months then we get everything together we do a tour which lasts possibly a year and we take a lot of time off to try and get ourselves back together after all the drinking that goes on or it's such like and then we come back and do another album. Well, this time we actually came off a tour, straight into the studio, got everything together, and we kind of had that pace about us, which made it to me really exciting. And it made, it's different. I've never done that before. For what well, for years I haven't done that. 
when you have a band that has any kind of longevity, you have troughs and you kind of go into and you come out. It's like waves, you know. You look at the stones, you get the same thing. It, it's the bands who survive that. A lot of it's fashion, you know. Fa- this comes in, that comes in. You're not cool anymore. And it's only the really strong bands who can fight that, you know. And you, you, you've got to have a real belief system because you've got to believe what you're doing is right. And then you know you might find that you're out in the cold, kind of musically, because I don't know, grunge is in, or techno rocks in, or dance rocks in, or whatever else is in. You know, you see everybody suddenly with a goatee beard or and a checky shirt going, "Well, this is cool. You look like a twat." And you've got to have it in your mind that, well, in actual fact, in a couple of years' time, you know, <laughs> this isn't going to be quite as happening. But this is where I am, and I believe in it. And that you've got to have that belief system. So. Getting back to your original point, yeah, there probably was troughs, but musically, you know, I enjoyed writing and, and working on the X Factor as I did on Virtual Eleven, you know, and as I have done on every album. And you do what you believe is right at the time, and it feels great. And I can go back and listen to them songs, and I was very happy with them, those albums. And you know, I think as long as you believe in something at the time, then even if everybody else doesn't see it, you know, you've got to take a step back and go, well, I think that's where we're at at the moment. And also, each album. It's a point in time, it's where you are at that point in time and it's important to get out where you are. And I think there's a lot of bands who, they don't do that, they look at what's happening outside and try to become part of that. And you're always going to be on the coattails of a fashion thing. Fashion is something that never interested me, ever, as you can tell. It feels stronger, yeah it does. I kind of have a gang mentality, whatever band I'm in. You know, if I'm in with Gillen or whoever I'm with, I feel like it's us against the world. I've always been one of those people, it's never so much I want to join everybody, I kind of want to be in a band and fight everybody. And I, right from White Spirit days, it was us and them. And, and I kind of need that mentality around me. And so being in Maiden was great through those years where heavy metal was uh, supposedly dead everywhere. And we would go out and we played 80,000 people here. And Even when we come to America, and people wouldn't tour, Kiss wouldn't tour, Van Halen wouldn't tour, they cancelled, everyone cancelled. The only people who came were us, you know, and all right, the audiences were small, we were doing two to five thousand seats and whatnot, and sometimes even smaller, but it didn't matter, we still had that kind of feel about us, and it's kind of invincibility. When the six of us are together, I feel that we kind of have this kind of a power thing. You can knock a brick, kind of a brick wall down with it, and I love that feel, and being in the band gives you that feel. I suppose it's, it's been in any team, you, when you're with Koran and stuff, and you might not be the coolest mag in the world at certain points, but you still have that belief that we're going to show them. And you need that in life. I think everybody needs a bit of that. Whether it was the first one, it might have been, I think we were in Portugal, you know, they would have been going through bits and pieces, and then that just popped out. It kind of just, it was like diarrhea. It was like, and it was there, the whole song. It was just came straight out. And yeah, yeah, it was very natural. And it's a great song. It cost us Adrian writing with... Uh, Steve and Bruce, which was great, you know, because he got him off his mark. It made him feel straight away that he was part of it again, which was important just to sort of get that feeling across. You know, so these ideas were coming out even before the two. We had a few things that we'd bashed out before then. So, you know, that got us feeling really good. And it, it kind of showed you the kind of power, songwriting-wise, that the band has. Well, as always, I want to do everything off the new album. As always, we won't be able to because there'll be somebody moaning about missing one of the other famous tracks off that they want to hear. But uh, it's very difficult. Every time you do a tour, you say, we won't do that one. And then they, you say, well, hang on a minute, you know, they're going to go mad for this song. And there's certain songs you have to do. It, it, that, it, every man has that problem. And I always want to do as many as we can off the new album. So again, we'll be arguing about it and throwing songs in and pulling songs out. But yeah, I think we should do a fair chunk of this album. I think it will work great live. You want to do well in your own country. As always, it's very hard to do well in your own country because people knock you, as you know. It's it's a British trademark, you know. You do well outside your country, you come back, they knock you. I just kind of come in and give it everything I've got wherever I am. It doesn't matter to me. It can be in Germany or it can be in Britain. It's great to do well in your own country. You know, but it's it's like anything. The market moves, and sometimes it's cool, and sometimes you're not so cool. At the moment, we're pretty cool, you know, which is great, thank heavens. But when we're not so cool, it doesn't really bother me either way. It's the way you got to look at it, I think, because if you let everything get to you, 
all of these things can, can affect you and if you let it get to you it's just not worth it at all hi there this is bruce dickinson from iron maiden and we're looking forward to seeing everybody at earl's court 16th of june for the biggest iron maiden show there has been in the uk for a very very long time all right so we'll see you there in june my friends Hi there, this is Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. This is The Wicker Man. Hello, this is Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. You're just about to hear our new single, it's called The Wicker Man. Hi, this is Janet Gers from Iron Maiden, and this is our new single, The Wicker Man. Hi, this is Janet Gers from Iron Maiden. Please stay tuned for a very special competition, which will be, I'm informed, coming up. Thank you.